You are now watching people's opinions on popular topics. Well, to be honest, not really right now. Frogger, I hear, is the latest when I listen to the radio. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely out. I started the 7th of last month protesting. Ladies and gentlemen, Slava Ukraini! Slava Ukraini! Slava Ukraini! Hello to everyone here today. It's great to see so many familiar faces that we saw last week and since then from our Ukrainian and our Canadian community who have been working and volunteering tirelessly these last 10 days to do everything we can to help the people of Ukraine and their fight for democracy, freedom and the rule of law. So I thank you for joining today's rally in support of Ukraine. My name is Kassian Soltykavich, Chair of the Ukraine Crisis Committee of the Ukrainian Canadian Congress Ottawa Branch. In the last 10 days, we have seen images and videos shared on social media that leave us without anything to say. Putin and his tyrannical regime invaded Ukraine, a sovereign, democratic, and free European nation. Putin wants to destroy Ukraine and the Ukrainian people. Russia is targeting civilians with bombing, rocket strikes, and air attacks all over Ukraine, including with cluster bombs. Russia's bombing is indiscriminate. The purpose of Russia's systemic, system, uh, systemic war crimes is to sow terror and chaos. And Russia's pr president and killer Vladimir Putin and his regime are war criminals. The people of Ukraine have stood up, and they will not be deterred, neither will, will, neither will we. The Ukrainian armed forces, the volunteers who have signed up to defend their country, including from overseas and other countries besides Ukraine, and every civilian who tells the Russian military personnel to turn around and go back home are all heroes, and we salute them. <laughs> These people are not only fighting for Ukraine, but for truth, a very, very important thing, the rule of law and democracy for the whole free world. We watch in awe and have nothing but the deepest respect for them all. To open today's program and to show Canadian solidarity for Ukraine, we will begin with the Canadian and then the Ukrainian national anthems, followed by a prayer for peace in Ukraine, led by Father Joachim Kovalchuk. Oh,
Вже відповідає на твої молитви. Поки ти молишся за Україну, під час обстрілів десятки ракетних снарядів не вибухнули. Поки ти молишся за Україну, російський танк переїхав автомобіль, в якому знаходився чоловік, і Бог зберіг йому життя. Поки ти молишся за Україну, на Волині під час висадки ворожого десанту з білоруського кордону подув, подув сильний вітер і десант разом із парашутами задуло назад за кордон. Поки ти молишся за Україну, Бог післав сніг і заховав ворожі мітки з доріг України. Поки ти молишся за Україну, у Чорному морі три дні поспіль панує шторм який не дозволяє ворожому десантові висадитись на територію України. Це далеко не все, що Бог робить у цей час. Коли Бог за нас, то хто проти нас? Народ Божий стій в проломі за свою країну, за свій нарід, за свою свободу. Твоя молитва має силу. Отож, любі браття і сестри, зараз заохочую вас спільно зі мною пронести ці слова молитви. Будь ласка, повторіть зі мною. Боже, бережи нам Україну. Господи, силою своєю захисти наш народ. Матінко Божа, Молися за нас. Слава Україні! Дякую, Вача. On the night of March 3rd, the world watched in horror as Russia bombed Ukraine's largest nuclear facility in Zaporizhia in southeastern Ukraine. This, reckless, this recklessness and Russia's readiness to engage in war crimes such as this could soon lead to catastrophic consequences for the whole world if we do not stand up to Vladimir Putin. Ukrainians are the only ones fighting and dying to stop this rogue terrorist regime. Canada and the West need to do far more to support them. I'm going to say Canada, you're saying support Ukraine. Canada! Support Ukraine! Canada! Support Ukraine! Canada! Support Ukraine! And now I would like to invite Charles Affairs of the Ukrainian Embassy in Canada, Mr. Andriy Bukvich, to speak. Любі українці наші друзі, всі ті, хто серцями, думками сьогодні з Україною, ви фантастичні, вас багато, і ми обов'язково переможемо. Сьогодні прощена неділя. Православні віряни прощають один одному. На нашій землі сьогодні загарбники, які теж вважають себе віруючими і православними. Але як простити їм 38 дітей, розстріляних в автівках, на очах у батьків, померлих від ран і неотриманої медичної допомоги? Як простити їм сльози тих дітей, які зараз в подвалах, яких не випускають, які не мають доступ до води, їжі, ліків? Як це зробити? Для нас вони завжди будуть тими, хто нападають вночі, оголошують війну без, посере... без попередження, атакують цинічно, вбивають всіх, закривають гуманітарні коридори. Чи пристомовимо їх? Ні. Наші діти простять їх? Ні. Діти наших дітей завжди пам'ятають, пам'ятатимуть ці злочини. Вони знов вписали себе в історію кров'ю наших дітей. Нашій бабусі 87 років. 
Вона ще пам'ятає ту страшну війну. Вона пам'ятає голод, вічей, смерть. Вона розповідає нам сьогодні, коли германці йшли, відступали, вони палили будинки. Вони стріляли в солом'яні стріхи, або будинки палали. Але до того вони просили дітей і жінок вийти з будинків. Рашисти так не роблять. Вони оточують міста за містом, вони бомблять, пускають ракети в дітей, в жінок, в мирних мешканців, знищують шпиталі, школи, дитячі садки. Вони нищать квартал за кварталом, безжально, без зупинки. Що ми можемо зробити? Не треба переконувати Канаді нікого, ані прем'єр-міністра, ані кожного українського канадця, ані пересічних канадців в тому, що треба підтримувати Україну. Що ми можемо зробити? Ми мусимо всіх як один вимагати. Закрийте небо над Україною. Врятуйте цивільних. Shelter our skies and we will deal with the rest. Shelter our sky. 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 Нам потрібні літаки. Нам потрібні сучасні засоби протиповітряної оборони. І ми зупинимо цих загарбників. Ми захистимо свободу і наші цінності. Канадці, як ніхто, мають нас зрозуміти. Мають зрозуміти, що ми за свободу, ми за волю, ми за весь світ в Україні. І ми можемо це зробити. Але поки лідери вільного світу вагаються, рахунок йде на години. Якщо ми не хочемо побавити, щоб ці 38 загиблих дітей перетворились на сотні, на тисячі, маємо підтримати Збройні Сили України. Маємо захистити наших дітей, озброїти наших вояків, озброїти наших пілотів, озброїти тих добровольців з усього світу, включно з Канади, які зараз за вилення в серця, за вілінням в совісті їдуть в Україну захищати свободу. Ми можемо це зробити. Якщо ми не допоможемо Збройним силам України, ми будемо постійно шукати гуманітарну допомогу. Ми будемо шукати гуманітарну допомогу для наших європейських сусідів, для наших дальніх європейських сусідів. І буде той час, коли Канада теж буде шукати гуманітарну допомогу. І питання буде не в тому, чи є у нас ця допомога, а питання буде в тому, чи захистить сусід від російської навали чи ні. Це питання часу. Ще раз засликаю, підтримайте Збройні Сили України. В Україні зараз кажуть, якщо на світі є Бог, то він із Збройними Силами України. Він має форму Збройних Сил України. Підтримуємо їх. Слава Україні! Слава Україні! Слава Україні! Слава Збройним Силам України! Слава Збройним Силам України! Слава! 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 Слава Збройним Силам України! Слава! 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 So following, following the meeting of a NATO foreign ministers on March 4th, NATO announced that it doesn't have any plans to enforce a no-fly zone over Ukraine. But this is unacceptable. This refusal to enforce a no-fly zone over Ukrainian territory shows a profound misunderstanding by Western leaders of the gravity of the situation in which the world finds itself after Russia began its all-out assault on Ukraine. Canada and the free world cannot stand and watch as Putin carries uh, carries out a genocide and blackmails the rest of the planet. We need a no-fly zone over Ukraine. No-fly zone! No-fly zone! No-fly zone! Next up, I'd like to invite Ambassador Thomas Luke of Estonia to speak. And I'd like to especially, uh, for everyone here as a Ukrainian flag, look around at the other flags we see here. We see Lithuania, we see Estonia, we see... Uh,
Latvia, we see the Belarusian community as well, and the European Union flag. All these communities are standing by Ukraine because they know how important it is, and they fought for their democracy as, as well. And the Baltic states especially sung for their democracy. Thank you very much indeed for inviting me. Dear organizers, ladies and gentlemen, dear every woman, man and child who have come here, I'd like to welcome you and I would like to greet you. What we are doing here today is important. Today's rally builds on many similar rallies carried out in the different capitals of the world, including Mount Capital Tallinn, where 30,000 people gathered to express their support. As President Zelensky acknowledged, every support is important. I'm, I am here today as an ambassador of Estonia. As an ambassador, I would like to convey to my country's unequivocal and unwavering support of Ukraine. Estonia's support is ironclad, firm and sustainable. It's all broad and expressed in political, economic, humanitarian and military terms. My government and my fellow Estonians have contributed in all these ways. The whole country stands united in supporting Ukraine, supporting its men and women on the battlefield, supporting those who choose to stay in Ukraine who cannot leave, and supporting women and children who seek refuge in Estonia. I am proud of Estonia's response. It's massive and sincere. And I want to say loud and clear, those people who choose to seek refuge in Estonia, we will take good care of you. However, I am standing also in front of you as a man, as a human being, my wife and me. We stand, we stand here because of our choice. It's our choice. It's our choice to support peace, to express solidarity and stand for freedom. It's our choice born of our conscience to stand up against tyranny and against Kremlin's choice of war. During these dark times, our choices are limited. It can only be right or wrong. There is no space for gray areas. Today, we are all here as Ukrainians in our hearts and thoughts. We stand for Ukraine here at home, no matter where. We are Ukrainians as long as it takes to stop injustice. There is somebody on this earth, in the Kremlin, who has dared to take the decision of which country has right to exist into his hands. Ukrainians have defied this explicitly, fighting Russian invaders and defending their freedom and sovereignty. The global stance regarding the Russian invasion was clearly demonstrated that the United Nations and Member States casted their votes on the resolution regarding Russian aggression against Ukraine. 141 countries voted in favor of a resolution and condemned Russian aggression. The international community message is crystal clear Russia, get out of Ukraine. And this is also our call here today. Dark times need leadership. Since the beginning of Russian aggression against Ukraine, we have seen how Ukrainian soldiers fighting for freedom trust their officers, who have become their role models. The world has also seen how President has grown into true leader of his nation, a man who is cherished by the whole world. I speak of President Zelensky. His video message some days ago saying, good morning my fellow Ukrainians, I am here with you, is infinitely more powerful than Putin's shallow attempt to summon the Russian people behind his goal of demilitarization and denazification. Putin fails big time as a president as an, and as a leader. He is neither of those things. As he has said himself, one KGB is always KGB. I've been in diplomacy for many years met diplomats around the world, including Russian diplomats. Many of them have family, rela uh, family re relations in Ukraine. I'm confident that not all of them accept Russia's invasion in their hearts. In Russian, there is a there is word, soist, conscience in English. Here is my call to Russian diplomats. Find your conscience. Say no to aggression. Say no to war. Say no to killing.
few days ago, I called my friend in Ukraine. Given the circumstances, we had a short conversation. At the end, he said, we will win this war and agreed to meet in Kiev, in Sony, Ukraine. I very much look forward to that day. In helping make that day come true, I would also like to express my support and appreciation for the action the Canadian government has taken. Canada and Estonia are allies, like-minded countries with the same understanding of what is happening around Ukraine. Who is the aggressor and who stands for freedom, defending its sovereignty? Finally, I'm going to say two words all now, and also know the response. I'm asking you to respond to these words with all your strength as one, that a clear and resolute voice reaches Kremlin's walls and delivers our message of commitment and resolve. Slava Ukraine! Slava Ukraine! Slava Ukraine! And we stand with you! Thank you to Estonia, thank you Ambassador Luke, and thank you to all of the all Estonians who around the world stand with the people of Ukraine and stand for democracy and freedom. And thank you for your kind words and your words of support. And as Ukrainians uh, flee their country, uh, we know that they have a safe space in Estonia as well to stay. Next up, I'd like to invite uh, another friend of the Baltics, or another member of the Baltics, Ambassador Darius Skusevicius uh, of Lithuania to speak. Drogi Druzi, dear friends! Wow, it's loud. <laughs> <laughs> dear friends, uh, I want you to know that uh, Lithuania and every Lithuanian stands with Ukraine and Ukrainian people. And we will be with you together till the very end. And there is no other choice. We will win! Razum do peremogi! Slava Ukraine! Short but very important, absolutely. Thank you, Ambassadors Luke <laughs> and Susevergius for your words of support. And thank you for the outpouring of support from our Baltic friends in Tallinn, Riga, and Vilnius on social media. We have seen the people come out to the streets with Ukrainian flags, cheering, supporting, and supporting the people of Ukraine. Because right now, Ukraine's friends and allies, they need to help protect Ukrainian civilians immediately from Russia's barbaric attacks from the air. As we've said, a no-fly zone needs to be implemented by Ukraine's allies over Ukrainian territory. Ukraine's allies need to help Ukraine secure its airspace with a no-fly zone. We need no more children dying, no more hospitals being blown up, and no more buildings need to be knocked down senselessly by Vladimir Putin's regime. Or we need to give Ukraine fighter jets and more anti-air defense systems today. Government of Canada, we're here today, we're calling on you. You can send anti-air defense systems. Ukraine can protect itself. As the Charles Affairs said, Andrei Bukovic said, give us clear skies and we will do the rest. Ukrainians will never give up. They will fight, but they need clear skies to be able to fight this war. I would now like to invite Andres Kasteris, President of the Latvian National Federation in Canada, Baltic Federation in Canada, and Vice President of the Central and Eastern European Council in Canada to speak. Dear friends, we are here in solidarity on behalf of the Latvian National Federation in Canada, the Baltic Federation in Canada, Estonians, Latvians, and Lithuanians, and the Central and Eastern European Council in Canada. Our words will be repetitive, but we have to keep repeating them, our thoughts and words, until the end. As we witness an amazing and horrendously tragic episode in history, we are not only witnesses. We too are on that front line. Our communities in Canada are also under attack, whether through hybrid or cyber warfare and insidious disinformation, which is meant to cause division 
divisions and weaken our voices. We are a target because of our united, powerful voice. In any case, anyone who has any doubt about what war looks like, now we know. There is a rogue terrorist, a thug, sitting on a throne in Moscow, who has the audacity to say that further sanctions on Russia would be an act of war. How absurd. Considering the massive bombing of innocent civilians and the outright murder which will have to be punished. There is a killer on the loose. Daily, we are forced to watch the trauma being inflicted on families, especially children. It is a war crime which the West must stop immediately. Ukraine is a beautiful country with beautiful people. And now they are on the front line of humanity. This is courageous resistance. We are all part of that resistance. The military force being used against Ukrainian forces is massive and premeditated. The Ukrainian president is begging for a no-fly zone. That airspace belongs to Ukraine. Surely, an independent nation has a right to its own airspace, its sovereign territory. And it has a right to protect itself and ask for help from other nations, Europe, North America. A no-fly zone is not just for Ukraine, but a defense for all of Europe. It is Europe which is under attack, as well as the whole world, the international order, and the rule of law. Gary Kasparov, chess player, said that we should wake up. We are already into World War III. The crimes against humanity which we are viewing on television every day are truly horrific. But as one resident of Kiev had said, I believe yesterday, we will win. There is no other choice. We are with you. Slava Ukraini. Thank you, Andres. We've seen many companies close down their companies, their operations in Russia, and we need to see more of them doing that today. But I have one request from Google. Please install Google Maps on Vladimir Putin's phone, so the next time he gets into a car, it gives him one direction, to go to The Hague. Nowhere else directly there. Here at home, we have seen an incredible outpouring of support from individuals, from businesses, and community organizations ready to help Ukraine. And there are a few businesses that are supporting Ukraine that you can buy from today. And one of them, I want them to be sold out. They are half a block away from here, Moulin de Provence on Queen Street. Please buy everything that they have after this rally. You can also go to Duke Fine Foods, Life of Pie, Nectar Flowers, Oesta Organics, Auto Progies, and Katina Gia and North and Navy on Bank Street, all of which are supporting Ukraine, and we thank them for their efforts to do their part. If you work at a business, ask them, can you give a little bit of money to Ukraine? Can you support freedom? Can you support democracy? Can you support the rule of law? If they have operations in Europe, see if they can provide housing and refuge and other supports for Ukrainians who are fleeing 
fleeing Ukraine right now, but want to return home, and we believe that they will return home soon, right after we beat all of these, this Russian imperialist army who has invaded Ukraine. Because we as Canada, we as Ottawinians, and we as people of democracies, we know our freedoms, and we know that we stand with Ukraine. We stand! We stand with Ukraine. We stand with Ukraine. Next, I would like to invite Yuri Kolomets to speak. <laughs> Hello, everybody. For the eleventh day, Ukrainian army and all of Ukrainian people are fighting for the survival of our country. The enemy is a vile, despicable, treacherous government of the largest country in the world. They started their criminal assault on humanity. Russia has been perpetuating an image of a mighty military power, and everyone believed them. But the Ukrainian people finally showing the world that the emperor has no clothes. The Russian military is poorly trained, equipped with Soviet-era weapons. They're hungry, they're demoralized, and the only thing they have going for them is numbers. If Russia has the second strongest army in the world, that means that the Ukrainian armed forces are number one then. <laughs> After the first two days of the war, it became obvious that they aren't going to win. But they're still bombing the civilian neighborhoods, the schools, maternity hospitals, and regular apartment buildings. Ukraine does not have an, an effective air defense system. We, we do the best we can with whatever we have. But what we have is clearly not enough to control the skies over our land. But, so that's why we've been asking the United States and the NATO, the so-called world police, to protect our skies for us. So far, the answer has been no. But we will never stop asking for this, because the most effective way to stop our children from dying. If NATO pilots won't protect us from the sky, we ask at least to give us the planes and the air defense systems so we can protect ourselves. I want to address everyone gathered here. First of all, thank you. Thank you to everyone here, to the people of Canada and all over the world who are supporting Ukraine and our people and in the war for our survival. The support has been unprecedented. And with the help from Canada and the rest of the world, we will win this war. I ask you to contact your MP and ask them to help Ukraine control its skies. No fly zone would be the best way to sa save the lives of the innocent. But at least give us the weapons and let us do it ourselves. I also want to address the people here who are from Russia or who have friends and family in Russia. We really appreciate your support. You being here means a lot. And thank you to the people in Russia who have walked out on the streets today against the war, despite the new draconian laws. The war is devastating both, both our countries. Putin and the rest of Russia's ruling class have done so much damage that it will take many generations to repair. As we see in Canada, reconciliation is very difficult. It's only possible if we all stand together and cry together and heal together. We can't do it separately. And finally, I want to address my fellow Ukrainians. We all are feeling all kinds of emotions. We feel great when we read the news about our victories. We feel incredible pride to be part of the heroic nation that can stand up to tanks with bare hands and can unite in the face of the incredible evil. We also feel the stress, the sorrow, and the anger when we see our peaceful cities destroyed and our children hiding in bomb shelters. We all feel the survivor guilt for being far away 
and in the safety of a wonderful country called Canada. All of these emotions are very natural, but they're, havoc, uh, but they're wreaking havoc on our mental health. And the most important thing is not to panic and keep our heads cool. Keep calm and let us alento you na boy po dawai. Oh, here, here. So take a break from social media. Stop reading Telegram channels. Focus on what you can control. Raise money, support your families, volunteer. And most importantly, it's okay to cry. It doesn't make you weak. Don't hold back the negative emotions. They all need to come out. You will feel much better. And we will keep and they will it will keep you going and do whatever you can to help this country. I want to end with a quote by the most famous Ukrainian poet, Kobzar Taras Shevchenko. Boritesa, poborete, vam boh pomahaye. Zavas pravda, zavas slava i vola svetaya. Slava Ukraini. Thank you, Yuri. Very touching. Yes, make sure you keep in, keep on social media, follow the news, but take a break. This is going to be a big repair process. It's going to take a lot of fundraising and a lot of time, but we will get through it. Ukraine will overcome because we know of Sabude Ukraina. We are grateful to the government for two new programs announced on March 3rd that will expedite Ukrainians coming to Canada. The Canada-Ukraine Authorization for Emergency Travel, which simplifies the travel visa process, and the Special Family Reunion Community will continue to keep working with the government on further assistance programs for Ukrainians who have had to flee their homeland, including implementing visa-free travel for appropriate, with appropriate security mechanisms. <laughs> People from Ukraine may not be here in the next few days, but they are coming. We know we are expecting them, and we have to get ready. So sign up if you're willing to host refugees at your home. Go to ottawaucc.ca, sign up to volunteer, ask friends and ask neighbors who are willing to help here in Ottawa to help these people when they arrive here in town. Let us get ready and let us welcome them with open arms and make them feel at home, even though they will be thousands of kilometers away from home. Russia's bombing of innocent civilians has already forced over a million refugees to flee Ukraine. Russia's savage attack on Ukraine is causing a severe humanitarian crisis that will only get worse in the days ahead. For Canadians who can help, please donate to the Humanitarian Relief Appeal established by the Canada-Ukraine Foundation and the UCC at cufoundation.ca. And there will also be people handing out postcards today with more information about where you can donate, including at Canada-Ukraine Foundation and how you can volunteer to help as well. Next, I would like to invite up another friend of our community here from the Belarusian community, Dr. Piotr or Peter Mozionak, president of the Ottawa branch of the Belarusian Canadian Alliance, to speak. We thank the Belarusian community and we know what the Belarusian community is going through and we stand by them as well for a free and democratic country and now with a dictator. Dear friends, Today we are here to say our strong no to the war that Russia has brutally launched against free Ukraine. The Soviet era monsters and criminals kill civilians and want to wipe out the Ukrainian nation. On behalf of free Belarusians, I would like to express our, our unconditional support to Ukraine. Belarusian patriots participate in defending Ukraine since 2014. Today, more than 200 Belarusians are fighting in the armed forces of Ukraine against Russian invaders. And Belarusians around the world send their donations to help Ukraine. Belarusian diaspora wants our government to give more help, including military, any help, to Ukraine that is on the front line of fighting for democracy for all of us. 
Patriots in Belarus continue showing their support to Ukraine on the streets and organizing sabotage on the Belarusian railway to prevent transportation of Russian troops. More than 800 protesters were arrested last Sunday in different regions of Belarus after people went to the streets to say no to Lukashenko and Putin's regimes. But we believe in free Ukraine. We believe in free Belarus. We believe in our victory. Slava Ukraini! Слава Украине! Слава Украине! Живе вольная Беларусь! Thank you and thank you to the Belarusian community here in Canada. We've seen that Lukashenko has ordered troops to go into Ukraine, and we've heard reports that these troops do not want to. They leave the army, they flee. And people, Lukashenko might think that he's the real leader, but all of those soldiers who deny that they're not going to go into Ukraine, those are the real heroes. Those are the real leaders. They're showing what actual leadership is like. Democracy and peace and not invading sovereign nations. The U entire Ukrainian people have risen up to, the, to defend their homeland from Russia's barbaric attack. The world stands in admiration at the courage and bravery of the Ukrainian people fighting to defend their land. Today, everyone who stands for liberty, democracy, and human rights is a Ukrainian. But thoughts and prayers are nice, but we need more than that. We need, Ukraine needs more arms. They need anti-air systems like Stinger missiles and other air defense systems and naval defense systems, anti-tank weapons and ammunition. They need to be able to defend themselves because they're fighting for democracy and the whole free world. They need more protective gear like bulletproof vests, helmets and first aid kits. And we can provide those to them, but we, need to, we call upon the Canadian government to provide this to the Ukrainian people so they can defend themselves. Here, here. Beyond government, we're also thankful to see the support of many international organizations and many international companies. Lego, for example, our banks, our airlines, and so many others who are standing up for what's right. But we need more help with humanitarian needs. We call upon Air Canada, WestJet, and others to provide cargo capacity to Europe and to provide transport for refugees who are fleeing war to come to Canada in the coming weeks. We also call on the government of Ontario to provide more humanitarian aid funding to Ukrainians. We are very thankful to see that Alberta government has provided support, large support, $10 million to help the people of Ukraine. But we need to see that from every single government across our country. When we see the Métis Manitoba community bringing together and donating $100,000 and the Manitoba government only getting $150,000, you can do more. All of our governments across our country can do more to support democracy. <laughs> Next, I would like to invite up Svilana Kominka, who is here from Vancouver. No matter where you are or wherever you are in the world, you have Ukraine in your heart, even if you're traveling across the country. So, Svilan. Slava Ukraini! Dorogi brothers and sisters, it's the time when you stand here all here, under the Parliament of Canada. Your brothers and sisters in Vancouver also came out of the Robson Square in Vancouver and united with a single voice for the fact that our world heard and heard the Putin's crime. I went here and thought, what to say? And why did I not remember the famous 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 famous? Давай виключим світло і будемо вчати про те, що не можна словами сказати, не можна писати, неможливо зіграти, а тільки мовчати, тихенько мовчати. Давай мовчати про те, що дівчата не вміють сховати, не можуть спати. Давай про мене і про тебе мовчати, мовчати, аж поки 
не захочем кричать. Сегодня пришел час кричать каждому из нас. Сегодня мы с вами воины другого фронта, диаспорного. И сегодня каждый из нас имеет возможность и имеет силу быть голосом тех, кто уже седьмой день не выходит из Харьковского подземельного метро. Тих хворих стареньких людей, в которых закончились леки, притулки с украинскими сиротами, слепыми детьми, которых эвакуировали до Польши минулого, вчера, лише вчера. Про тих парализованных Українських людей, які залишилися під, під вогнем і не можуть спуститися з 10-го поверху своїх квартир, а вже всі давним-давно виїхали з їхніх будинків. Ви всі маєте силу стати голосами війни. Ми сьогодні започаткували цю ініціативу. Історії звідусіль приходять до нас. Ми їх перекладаємо на різні мови для того, щоб нас почув світ. Будь ласка! Не мовчіть! Мовчання – це байдужість. Ми мусимо бути голосами тих людей, які сьогодні вже не можуть говорити, тому що вони бояться і сидять під страхом градів і ракетних ударів. Дякую всім за увагу. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm also standing today as an educator, as an international educator. Yesterday, One of the most prominent universities in the world, University of British Columbia, released a statement that they are going to defer tuition fee for Russian students. Nothing about Ukrainian students. Can we be silent? Please be careful. Be the voice of those that need protection and defense. Slava Ukraini! Razum! До перемоги! Разом до перемоги! Разом до перемоги! As we're approaching the end of today's program, I would ask everyone here who's in the front, if you could all try to take a few steps back, because all we're going to do is we're going to try to make Parliament Hill blue and yellow. We have our blue ribbons and we have our yellow ones and we're going to try to make a big Ukrainian flag here till we can finish our finish our program here today. We're going to try our best as we can with the wind. But if you're asking yourself if you're asking yourself what you can do today to help Ukraine, write to your MP. If you've never written to your MP, find out. If you don't even know their name, figure out what their name is, write to them, send them an email, call their office on Monday morning. They're gonna be here, call them. Make sure your voice is heard. Visit ottawaucc.ca to find out how you can help, how you can volunteer, and how you can house refugees when they come to town in a few weeks. Pick up a flyer from one of our volunteers here today and donate. Please donate. If you're able to, monetary donations are the best. They can go to Ukraine immediately and they can buy the things they need right away. Follow us on social media to get the latest updates. And if you want to donate items, physical items, make sure you follow us to figure out what Ukraine actually needs. So thank you everyone for joining us here today. A reminder to please pick up any pieces of paper you see around you, any signs, anything like that. Let's leave Parliament Hill cleaner than when we started. A particular thank you. A particular thank you to Ottawa Police and the Parliamentary Protective Service for their work today. Thank you for democracy. Thank you for that because without them we know we, they know that they stand for democracy, the rule of law, and we're able to have peaceful protests like this. Слава Украине! 
Слава Україні! Ще не те! Here, you can have this little pedestal. <laughs> it's pretty nice. I bet. Let's go.